Hello? Oh, hi. Uh, okay, so this is the Chicago Python Users Group meeting, Chippy, ShyPy, whatever. Uh, this is Peter Fine, and he's going to talk about Grassy Knoll. Oops, sorry. So yeah, hi. Welcome to Chicago. Uh, yeah, we had a, this is our second uh, user group meeting of this conference. We had one Thursday night. And um, since I was the one who thought this was such a good idea, I got to give the talk, which I'm somewhat excited about. And so just to make sure you're in the right place, uh, Today's Saturday. If you weren't clear, it's Saturday. And we're here in Chicago. Um, and it's thanks to some pretty awesome people and uh, that this conference has actually happened. And one of those guys is back there trying to make something else happen. Uh, remember, Pyth Python is a volunteer-run conference. Nobody gets, well, Basically, nobody gets paid to do this. I'm certainly not getting paid to do this. And uh, Ted Polari, hi, Ted, uh, really deserves a round of applause, because without him, we would not be here. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. And so I'm going to give my talk now. Uh, uh, this talk is about a project called Grassy Knoll. Um, Grassy Knoll is a search engine written in Python. Um, and so it was started last year at the sprints at the Dallas PyCon, hence the name. Um, and we're going to be sprinting again this year for about ooh, three or four days next week. And so what do we mean by a search engine in Python? Uh, Search refers to finding some documents in a pile, right? An engine would just mean it's something that runs in a computer. And Python, well, because Python is awesome. Oh, that's me. All right, so what are we talking about documents? One of the classic examples here is book search, right? On Amazon, on Google, on O'Reilly. Um, and so. Uh, there are all these different books available, and how do you find the one that you want? In, in some ways, it's like choosing what sandwich you want when you go to the deli. Um, and it's, right, you have all these different sandwiches, and they have lists of different ingredients. And how do you find what do you want to have for lunch, or what you want to read while you eat your lunch? Um, yeah. And so we're going to solve this problem with Python. And the reason we're going to use Python is because Python is awesome. Um, and largely, we're able, like, so this is a, a fairly complex decision that we need to make, namely what to have for lunch. Um, and we want to get our lunch as quickly as possible because we want to get back to the conference and worrying about our Python code. So we're going to use Python to do this. Um, and so uh, other problems I like to think of is finding uh, the correct beer when you're doing your recycling. Um, Somehow, that one Bud Light can gets in with all of your microbrews, and you have to fish it out before you can bring them back. Um, and so about this project, it's open source. Of course, it's open source. Um, it's BSD licensed. It currently runs on Linux, largely Ubuntu, and the Mac. Um, Windows support is what it is. Um, oh, and so this is me. There we go. Oh. Sorry. All right, let's try this again. All right. That's me. That's me this morning, right after my coffee. Um, yeah, and so thanks to that coffee, uh, I was able to come up here and give this talk. Um, and so this project, so I work for a company called Juju. Uh, Juju is a job search engine, and so uh, rather than searching books or restaurant menus, uh, we try to uh, get job seekers to find uh, new places to work. Um, and so 
this is uh, an open source project that I'm working on with the support of my company, which is nice. Um, and so my goals for this talk, uh, to start out with, number one, not dying. Uh, which I seem to have done so far. It's been a long, this talk was kind of came together at the last minute. There was a gap in the schedule. And being a last minute sort of guy, as you may have seen me running back up to my room to get my socks uh, b right before here, uh, decided to fill it um, because, well, I'm decent at such things. But, so the, the code itself, is everybody clear on what the, perp the aim of this project is? Is any, anybody not clear? Yeah. No, cr uh, no crawler. This is just a service. This is just, and I'll get to that in a second, but yeah, this is just a set of documents and being able to search through them. Yeah. Uh, it's all implemented, but by libraries. And so the, the way I think about Python here is largely glue. Glue between other Python libraries, glue between C libraries, glue between Java libraries. And so I'm using as much third party code as I can. Um, so, yes, it's there. Yeah. I'm sorry? It's content. Um, and I'll get to that a little more in a second. Um, and so what we're getting at here, oh, so just a bit about the status. Um, at this point, uh, I just put out a 0 0.3 release. Um, it's largely exploratory. And so like this talk, I see that uh, software release is a way to explore ideas. Um, and so it runs, it does stuff, but it's not going to run on your production servers. Um, and in this talk, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between the current state of the code and how I'd like things to be. And so the current state of the code is kind of spaghetti-ish. It's kind of like a big inside of a pumpkin. Um, so there's a whole bunch of bits, and they're connected, and it's slimy. And it works, and it's a tasty pumpkin. But there are a couple of kernels of seed in there that are really quality. And so the objective, particularly at the sprints over the next few weeks, is to kind of dig out those seeds and put them together in a nicer new framework uh, that makes better use of them. So yeah, I will also be talking about kind of really sort of some more blue sky ideas, stuff that's a little bit out there, future work. Um, and so I'll try to make clear what uh, different bits are. Um, but yeah, so not, not everything I'm going to tell you about is implemented. Um, not everything that I tell you about will get implemented at the sprints this time. But it's all sort of possibilities. All right, so the model we're using here for storage and search is what I call a collection model. And so a collection is a fairly simple kind of universal API for putting things together, right? Be they shipping crates, right? A whole bunch of these things. And we're just going to call this a collection. And so the collections have eight methods, right? They have these eight methods that define this API. And so these are create, retrieve, delete, list, length, iter, and running queries. And so the idea here is that sort of any sort of on-disk storage library, where that's MySQL, SQLite, something for text search like Lucene, DBM, supports some variant of these operations, but they're all largely the same. And what we're getting basically at here is what's called a key value store. And so whether a key, if you're coming from the database land, is the prim your primary identifier for a row in a table. Um, on the Lucene side, it's a, I mean, just generally unique identifiers, um, which are paired up with values. Anybody who's used Amazon's S3, it's a very similar model. Um, and so these are, uh, the, doc the values we're storing here are what we call documents. And so this is both kind of content, it's fielded content. So an author, a title, like those books we saw before, and then the content itself. And we want to go through these, this collection, and find, you know, one particular, you know, needle in the box from China 
down in the bottom left. And so that's the objective of a search engine. Okay. So does this storage model make sense? What else can I tell people about this, right? The, yeah. Okay. Um, so the difference here, there's a bunch of differences. Um, I, you know, I'll come back to that. Uh, let's skip ahead a little. No, nope, we're going too far. Um, does this part make sense to anybody? Yeah, okay. Um, so, this is all, imagine, this is like a, like a database server. Think of this grassy knoll when you deploy it as a fast index that sits next to your database server. And so you can hand, 10 minutes, huh? Oh boy. I'm gonna keep going. I am using Pilocene, and so let's go find that. Yeah, so let's find. Here we go, so backends. Um, currently the backends we support storing things to disk are Lucene, SQLite, Dict, and just a pickle. Um, other modules that could work here, and I'll try to just give you a sense of what's all these have in common. Um, Shelve, DBM, Memcached, uh, S3, PyTables, Directory Tree. And so, where did you go? These all, these all have that same uh, right API that you can wrap around them. You can create items, you can list items, you can iterate your items, you can retrieve them, and then you can search them. You have different languages to search them in, whether that's SQL or Lucene Query Parser. And so what the idea here, as my time runs out, behind Grassy Knoll is to wrap these libraries in an SQL, in, in an HTTP server, okay? Not dead coyotes, not stacks of cars, no deadlock. Uh, where are we? Okay, so, right, this is this API again, written in URL form, okay? We're ex using all four HTTP methods. This is what's called REST, right? And so REST, this collection API matches up against the REST API. And so what we can do is, right, recreate a collection remotely on the client side, right? Does that make any sense to anybody? Is that, ooh, I like, these guys. I like that these guys actually are nodding. It makes me feel like I'm competent. Um, so we can use, right, I found, I found my audience. Um, <laughs> So we can use the same HTTP methods that we're wrapping on the server side on the client side as well. And so that collection API, we can recreate that on a client and write code that can send messages back and forth. And so this lets us hook up multiple box, more than one box together. Does that make sense? Yeah? Really? I'm getting blank stares on this side. Okay. Um, the glue underlying all of this is HTTP. Yeah. Replication. Replication. And so, right, if you take one of those collection APIs, right, uh, skip that. Um, right, that's talking HTTP, and you put a box in front of it that is, right, acts as a client to those. And this front box serves your browsers, right? It can send, it can act like a hyper-intelligent mod rewrite. Everybody familiar with mod rewrite? No. Yes? Okay. And so you can route, route URLs to different individual backend servers. And so you can do things like replication, and then you can do to serve queries, you can load balance. 
right, with NGINX or Pound. How am I on time? I've got five minutes. Woo, all right. Um, yeah. So, okay, we'll get all of that. Right, so what else are we doing? Let's talk about future work. Do, 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 do. It's about how I feel at the moment. Um, right, so this is all done in Python. Um, and the idea here is Python has problems scaling beyond a single CPU or a single machine, right? And so part of the goal in this project is to serve larger sets of documents or collections than you can fit on a single computer. And so we need a lot more snakes to get the same performance that you can get out of something like Java or certainly like something like C. And so one of my objectives for the future is to make doing that easier. And the way I think to do that easier is over HTTP, um, particularly uh, RESTful HTTP. Um, so yeah, what are we, what do I want out of the future? I'm really, really looking forward to Pi 3K. Um, oops, I lost my slides. Uh, namely some of the new features that are getting introduced, annotations, um, make, will make some of the mapping to a REST API as opposed to the XML RPC client, which is currently in the standard library, just does for you there's a lot more manual work and having function annotations will help with that. Um, yeah. Oh, and I need help. I need help. Um, there's other interesting bits in here, um, like those pumpkin seeds. And uh, I need help digging those out and doing something, something neat with them. Um, uh, you should also, let's get out of here. Um, this, the project is extensively documented. Um, there's source code documentation, there's wikis, there's issue tracking, um, and uh, uh, yeah, if you want to find out more. Great. Any questions? That went really quick. Yeah. I haven't even checked. Okay. I haven't even checked. Um, yeah. Uh, it runs, there's, here I can show you, it runs, which is always nice. Um, my other problem is uh, I don't really know HTML very well. Um, I haven't really made a web page since 1997. Um, you're not listening? I'm not missing anything. Um, oh, I don't have it running here. There we go. Um, and so, you know, it was awesome. You used to, you wanted something in the middle of the page, you put in a center tag. You wanted something bold, you put in a bold tag. And does it? All right. People, people yell at you. Yeah. At the sprints, um, the main thing we're going to be focusing on, and why, um, the main thing we're going to be focusing on at the sprints is the weakest part of this project is the HTTP libraries. And so, there's three parts I'm writing here. I'm writing an HTTP client to this service. I'm writing the service itself, and I'm writing the thread pool server implementation that it runs on. That would be like paste, one of paste servers or cherry pie. And so at the moment, the latter two, namely the server and the, f the server side front end, talk through WSGI, and that's kind of a difficult place to to interoperate through. And so I've got these three different parts that I need to implement the server side and the client side. And I'm using three different libraries to do it, and that's really frustrating. And so what I would like to do is um, move towards a, more, a new HTTP library, um, one that can handle both the cl client side of the protocol and the server side of the protocol um, without having to you know, worry about, right, so this is not running under Apache, not running under Lighty, right, just being a web server and being a client um, at the network level. Um, and so that's, that is largely to address speed, um, just being able to get the bytes on and off the wire faster than we can going through like, you know, a 36-step WSGI call stack 
Um, the tracebacks currently are quite, quite long, and you know, one of my objectives is just to make those shorter. Um, who else? Do I have any time left? Yeah? Um, so, any uh, other events that are happening? Um, where is, is, uh, there's a pub crawl tonight. Is this getting anybody's attention? I hope this gets somebody's attention. Um, yeah, uh, we'll be leaving the atrium. Uh, the pub crawl will be at a bar called the Mac Room. Um, uh, the Map Room is, uh, yeah, here you go. Um, this is, we'll be leaving the atrium at drinking time. And so maybe 10 o'clock should gather in the atrium whenever the bar closes here. And this is off the blue line, it's off the Armitage blue line stop, and we'll go here, and then we'll go to a bar called Danny's, and then we'll go to a bar called Charlotte's, and then we'll get back on the train and come home and pass out. Um, tell all your friends, it'll be lots of fun. Yeah, any time, or that's it? Oh, so we have like, oh. have five minutes for questions, huh? Yeah. Um, it's just text. Oh, so I can show you. Um, the preferred input format is JSON. Um, JSON is a, a, a basically a subset of JavaScript that uh, can represent similar data as XML, but is way easier to work with. Um, in fact, uh, it looks like this. Um, so b very, very similar to Python. And so. Uh, it sends JSON back and forth. It will also do some HTML, but again, my HTML sucks. Yeah. What's your name, by the way? Uh, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can store, when you write the, you have the option, it depends on the back end. Um, so like, uh, you can, you have the option of not storing all of the text that you index. So Lucene will do that in particular. Um, and the idea there is that if you're uh, indexing local files on disk, you don't need to restore their contents. Um, or maybe you have another faster way of getting at the contents than through Lucene. Uh, something like SQLite, obviously, will have to store store the contents. But yeah, that's set up. the The definition of the storage is set up per backend, and so that's separate from the front end, which is receiving the documents themselves. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so each, uh, each backend has its own query language. And so rather than try to write a universal, the universal query parser, um, there's some mechanism for hooking up. The, so that's what, the, what are called query methods. And so they just take arbitrary parameters and are return a set of results. And so those can be mapped to URLs, the query parameter in a URL. Say, yeah. I'm sorry. So, right, this is a web server around. So, all of these libraries that I'm talking about aren't like MySQL, right? MySQL talks ha already has a server. These are libraries like SQLite or Lucene that don't really have a server. And so, the idea is to put an HTTP server around it. And so by replication, we mean running that HTTP plus, say, Lucene comp, you know, process on multiple boxes. N uh, so in front of it, you put another grassy null node. And so that node acts as a client to each of the replicas. Does that make sense? Right, it's an HTTP client to those replicas. And this guy out in front talks to the browsers, who are all you people out there, right, or to any other clients. 
And so this guy, right, it's uh, right, like it's like replicating behind a load balancer, except the load balancer in your traditional scheme here is a gra another grassy null server. Does that make sense? Uh huh. You already so you already have a Lucene index. So this, uh, I mean, I think you can. I mean, you should be able to run it around. Is it built with? I'm out of time, huh? Okay, I'll be happy to talk. Uh, answer any questions uh, right now. Thanks.